Mathematics crossing your eyes? Maybe Pocket Ronnie can help you! Okay, we're going to look at 11b8. Why do we learn completing the square? We're dealing with the quadratic equation and we're trying to solve for x. So when you solve for x, the first thing you do is set it equal to zero. And we should have two solutions. We learn completing the square when we cannot factor. Because if you looked at this quadratic equation and this trinomial, if we tried to factor this, that would be x and x. We know from these signs that one's going to be positive and one's negative, and the factors are 10, are either 10 and 1 or 5 and 2. And so, no matter how you do it, if we put 5 and 2 in here, because that's positive, that's not going to give us a positive 8. That's going to be a negative 2x and a positive 5x, which is a positive 3. That is not a positive 8. Even if I use 10 and 1, 10 and 1, negative 1x, Positive 10x is a positive 9x. That is not 8. So we use completing the square when this cannot be factored. So here is where completing the square works, or why it's good. When we complete the square, the first thing we need to do is we need to move this out of the way. We're going to move it to the other side. Okay, so now we have 8x squared plus 8x plus I'm going to fill in the blank there because I'm, because I'm going to complete the square. This side is 0 plus 10 is 10. In the world of algebra, whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other side. So if I'm going to add something here to complete the square, I also have to add it over there in order to balance my equation. Remember, I'm balancing the seesaw about the equal sign. If I add something here, I have to add it to the other side. And I write this blank just to remind me not to forget to, to write it, okay? So now we complete the square. How do we complete the square? We take half of this and then square it. Half of 8, or 8 divided by 2 is 4, and then we square it. If we add 4 squared over here, we have to add 4 squared over here. Now we factor, okay? This factors into... It would factor into two parentheses, but when you complete the square, it will always turn out to a parentheses squared. Always, always. So this factors into take the square root of this. Square root of 16 is just 4, or that number I wrote there. So that factors into x plus 4 squared equals, now let's combine this, 10 plus 16 is 26. So now we're trying to solve. The idea of solving is to get x all by itself. So the first thing I need to do is get rid of the square. What is opposite of square? Square root. If I take the square root of the left side, I have to take the square root of the right side. So this square root and that square cancels. When you take the square root of the right side, there is something you always, always put in front of your um, square root symbol, and that's a plus or a minus. Because when you take the square root, you can get the positive answer or the negative answer, and this is how you get your two solutions. So over on the left, our square root and our square cancel, and I was left with x plus 4. On the right, I have plus or minus square root of 26. Now we subtract our 4 over. I cannot combine numbers with radicals. So I write it as negative 4 plus or minus <coughs> square root of 26. So there are two things that I look for. Can I reduce my radical? The square root of 26, those factors are just 13 and 2. And neither one of those are a perfect square, so I cannot reduce my radical. Um, I have no fractions. If I had fractions, I'd look to see if I can reduce my whole number. So this is your answer, but what I want you to see is how this is our two solutions. So our two solutions are a negative 4 plus square root of 26, that's one solution, and then negative 4 minus square root of 26. That's what this plus or minus means. It means it could be a positive square root of 26 or a negative square root of 26. And these are two different solutions. Okay, I'm going to write this out over here. Negative 4 plus square root of 26, negative 4 minus. I'm going to check one of them. I'm just going to check one of those solutions. I'm not going to check both of them. Okay, so once you solve it and you check 
I'm only going to check one of these solutions. Theoretically, you should be checking both of them. When you check, you take each of your solutions. I'm going to do negative 4 plus square root of 26. You take it back and you put it in the problem everywhere you see an x. So this would be negative 4 plus square root of 26 parentheses square plus 8 times negative 4 plus square root of 26 minus 10 equals 0. This is written like this. Negative 4 plus square root of 26 times negative 4 plus square root of 26. This has to be foiled out. This gets distributed. So positive 8 times negative 4 is a negative 32. Positive 8 times a positive square root of 26 is a positive 8 square root of 26. Okay, let's foil this out. Negative 4 times negative 4, that's a positive 16. Negative 4 times a positive square root of 26 is a... Did I say ne negative 4 times a positive square root of 26 is a negative 4 square root of 26. This times this is a negative 4 square root of 26. Positive times that positive is a positive, and square root of 26 times square root of 26 is just 26. Then I still have the rest of the equation, 32 plus 8 square root of 26 minus 10 equals 0. Right. Now we like to combine the same kind. Negative 4 square root of 26 and square root of 26, that's the same kind. So negative 4 of these and negative 4 of these is a negative 8 of these. And the negative 8 of these and the positive 8 of these all cancel. So those all go away. 16 plus 26 is... 42, so that would be minus 32 plus 10 equals 0. That's a minus 10. 42 minus 32 is 10, and 10 minus 10 is 0, and so that checks. Okay, let's look at 11B10. So the first thing you always want to do on quadratic equations is check to see if it factors. Okay, but I can tell you right now, this does not factor. If it factors, it makes solving it a lot easier. This does not factor, so you have to complete the square to solve it. The first thing you do when you complete the square is move this 30 out of the way. So you subtract 30 to both sides. So you have x squared minus 10x, and then to complete the square, you're going to add something here to complete the square. On the right-hand side, you have negative 30. But if you add something to this side of the equation, you have to add that same thing to the other side to balance out the both sides of the equation. So I draw my blank over here just to remind me to write it over there. Now to complete the square, you take half of this. So negative 10 divided by 2 is a negative 5, and then you square it. So that's a negative 5 squared, and then you add that over here as well, negative 5 squared. It's important to put your parentheses around a negative because remember a negative 5 parentheses squared is different than negative 5 squared. This is a positive 25, this is a negative 25. So it's important to put the parentheses. Okay, so now over here we factor. We factor this and this will be x and then minus 5. And if you were to fact, if you had the plus 25 there, if you have it written out as x squared minus 10x plus 25, because negative 5 squared would be positive 25, this factors into x minus 5, it would be x minus 5 times x minus 5, which we can write it like that. And then on the right hand side we have negative 30 plus 25, negative 30 plus 25 is a negative 5. How do we solve that? We have to get rid of the square. The opposite of squaring is square root, so we take the square root of both sides. You always put a plus or minus in front of your square root. So this square root and that square cancels, and so we're left with x minus 5 equals plus or minus square root of negative 5. What does a negative under the radical tell you? It tells you it's an imaginary number. So you pull the negative out of the radical as an i. So if I pull that negative out as an i, I've got i and the square root of 5. The square root of 5 does not simplify any more than that, so I'll leave it just like that. Plus or minus i square root of 5. Now I need to add 5 to the other side. I cannot combine whole numbers and imaginary numbers or even with a radical. So I write it as 5 
plus or minus i square root of 5. So it is okay to have imaginary numbers. Remember, this is a complex number. It's a real number plus or minus an imaginary. So these are your two solutions. You can leave it like this, but just to show you, you're either going to have 5 plus i square root of 5 or 5 minus i square root of 5. Those are your two different solutions. Okay, now we're looking at 11e7, and we have this uh, trinomial, this equation. And the first thing you always want to do is look to see if it will factor. I will tell you right now, it does not factor. So when it doesn't factor, we have to complete the square. The first thing you do when you complete the square is move this 9 out of the way. Okay, so we add 9 to both sides. So we have x squared minus 3x. We're going to add something here to complete the square. And on the right, we have the 9. And if we add something on the left, we have to also add it on the right. How do we complete the square? Take half of this, negative 3 divided by 2. Can we reduce or do anything to negative 3 divided by 2? No, so we leave it as a fraction. And then you square it. So you have negative 3 divided by 2 squared. So you add that also over here, negative 3 over 2 squared. Okay, then you factor. So this will factor, remember it's going to factor into some parentheses squared. So it's going to be x and then you can just write what's in the parentheses because negative 3 over 2 squared is negative 3 over 2 times negative 3 over 2 which is a positive 9 over 4. And if you take the square root of that you would end up with this. But you've got to take upon that sign. So I like writing it with this parentheses squared because whatever's in the parentheses is what I write right here. Okay? That's what I write right there. And then on the right hand side you have 9 plus that squared is negative 3 over 2 times negative 3 over 2. That would be a positive and then 9 over 4. So what do I have to do when I combine numbers? I have to make a common denominator. So therefore this needs a denominator of 4 so I've got to multiply 4 to both of those. So on the left I still have my x minus 3 over 2 squared and then here I'd have 36 over 4 plus 9 over 4 and so now I've got a common denominator so 36 plus 9 would be 45 over 4 x minus 3 over 2 squared now I'm ready to start solving I've got to get rid of the square how do I do that take the square root of both sides whatever I do to one side I do the other side and then you always have a plus or minus in front of your square root. This square root and this square cancels, so you're left with x minus 3 over 2. When you do the square root of a fraction, that's the square root of the numerator and the square root of the denominator. Okay, so I'm going to leave square root of 45 like it is, and then what is the square root of 4? Just 2. So now I can add 3 halves to both sides. I'm going to leave it as a fraction because then you see I actually have a common denominator. So if I add, I'm just going to write it over here, plus 3 over 2. So that goes away. So on the left I just have x. And then I already have a common denominator so I can combine my numerator. I'm just going to write my 3 first. 3, it's better to have whole numbers and then plus or minus square root of 45 all over 2. This was just like when we did radicals, so now what do you look for? Can you simplify your radical? Yes, because that can be broken up into 9 times 5. Okay, square root of 9 times square root of 5, which is the same thing as, so then we have 7 over 3 plus or minus, square root of 9 is 3, and then square root of 5 all over 2. And then we look to see, can we reduce our whole numbers? We cannot reduce 3 and 2 all by the same thing. So our two solutions are 3 plus 3 square root of 5 all over 2, and then 3 minus 3 square root of 5 all over 2. And this would be your final answer. Okay, let's look at 11b6. This is very important. When you complete the square, well first you want to look to see if you can factor. You cannot factor. 
but can you factor something out? Yes, you can. You can factor a 2 out of everything. Okay? When you complete the square, it's very important to not have this coefficient right there. You do not want a coefficient in front. All the problems we have worked so far did not have a coefficient in front of your x squared term. Okay? So, when you don't want a, a, uh, the number in front of your coefficient, just divide everything by that number. It's the same thing as factoring out a 2. So I'm just going to divide everything by 2 because see 2 divided by 2 is 1. It makes that turn into 1. But whatever I do to this thing, I have to do it to everything. Every term, even on the right hand side. So 2 divided by 2 is 1. So it makes that turn into a coefficient of 1 and that's what you want when you complete the square. Negative 16 divided by 2 is a negative 8x. Negative 4 divided by 2 is a negative 2. 0 divided by anything is still 0. So now I have it to where I do not have a coefficient here. I still look to see if I can factor. There's no way that I, with the factors of 2 and 1 would I ever get a negative 8 here. So we have to complete the square to solve. The first thing you do when you complete the square is move your 2 out of the way. So you have x squared minus 8x, and then when we complete the square, we're always going to add something here to complete that square. Whatever I add to the left side, I have to add to the right side. So I just draw that blank to remind me. How do I complete the square? Take half of this, so divided by 2, half of negative 8 is negative 4, and then square it. So you take half of this and then square it. So I need to also add negative 4 squared to the right side. Now we factor. It's always going to be in something parentheses squared. And here will be x, and then you take upon this sign, or you just write what's in your parentheses, minus 4, 2 plus 16. Negative 4 squared is a positive 16. So 2 plus 16 is 18. So now we're ready to start solving to get x all by itself. I have to get rid of this square, so I take the square root. So I also do the square root of the right side, and what do I put in front of my square root? A plus or minus. So that square root and that square cancel, so on the left I'm left with x minus 4. So now I need to get rid of this 4, so I add it to the other side. Okay, I cannot add numbers to radicals, so then this just becomes x equals 4 plus or minus square root of 18. So you can see your two solutions. One solution is 4 plus square root of 18, 4 minus square root of 18. Oh, we're actually not done there because we need to look to see can we simplify the radical. And yes, we can simplify square root of 18. Okay, square root of 18 will break down into square root of 9 times square root of 2. So coming back over here, so x equals 4 plus or minus, square root of 9 is just 3, and then you leave the square root of 2. So your two solutions would be 4 plus 3 square root of 2, 4 minus 3 square root of 2.